Good evening everyone. Welcome again to another live episode of live streaming of our uh, basic transfer pricing. No? Tonight our uh, topic will be about transfer pricing issues involving uh, IP company. No? Kasi yung last time natin about uh, insurance company at saka finance company. This time, uh, dapat magkata magkasama sila pero hiniwalay natin. No? So, hiniwalay natin ito yung pangatlo the intellectual property company the ip no so and then the case na uh, discuss po natin is bhp billet on limited versus the commissioner of taxation although uh, if you try to look at sa ating uh, youtube channel meron na po tayong case diyan ng uh, bhp billet on limited no meron nang nagreport diyan but uh, since this time so it, for the year 2021, ito po yung case ng BHP Billiton, yung sa Australia, nakarating na po ito sa Supreme Court, no? At meron na siyang uh, final decision yung Supreme Court. So, i-discuss po natin. Okay? Uh, ilan na yung ating uh, subscribers? Okay, so thank you very much po sa ating subscribers. Meron na po tayong 785 subscribers sa ating viewers okay so uh, uh, shout out po sa mga viewers po natin no? and uh, <clears throat> let's begin with the discussion po dito sa ating uh, transfer pricing issues involving IP company para sa akin this is the most important topic in uh, transfer pricing uh, about intellectual property company. Why? Because there are so many transfer pricing issues that uh, reaches the court all over the world. And the reason is, or the issues uh, that are going to be settled are that of the intellectual property or involving those, what we call as intangibles. No? Okay. <clears throat> so, I have selected here uh, five transfer pricing issues that will involve uh, intellectual property no? or IP or intangibles. No? Okay, uh, so I start with uh, number one. IP company established in tax haven country so that remittance of royalty payments is subject to a very low withholding tax. No? So this uh, intellectual property company, this is another company, can be a subsidiary, can be a branch or whatever, office of a certain group or member of the group wherein they have to establish it in, in some other countries in order to benefit in the payment of taxes. So this IP company uh, sometimes is established in a low tax jurisdiction you know, where the, the uh, payment of tax is very low, the tax rate, the income tax rate is very low. So this uh, IP company the group will transfer its ownership of intangible properties to the uh, intellectual property company and then register that IP company in a low tax jurisdiction so that when uh, the royalty payments for the use of those intangibles owned by the IP company is limited to that uh, certain company, the payment of um, Withholding tax on royalties is very low, or none at all, or uh, sometimes they have to put up uh, an IP company in a, a country where there is a lot of treaty benefits. You know? so, so, so they have to choose countries where uh, tax treaty between those countries and the country of the a group is uh, having a very uh, favorable tax treaties. No, in order to avail of the uh, lower tax rate of tax treaties. No, so that's, that is number one. IP company established in tax haven countries or low tax jurisdiction so that the remittance of royalty payments is subject to a very low withholding tax or none at all. No? And then the second issue, <clears throat> uh, possible issue, no? uh, transfer pricing issues involving IP company, is the transfer of intangibles to an IP company wherein the valuation of intangibles is very low. Actually, there are so many cases as an example to that. And uh, the valuation of 
the intangibles reaches the court. No? In some cases, the tax authority wins. Sometimes it's the taxpayer who wins, no? depending on the uh, verdict of the court or the decision of the court. Valuation of intangibles is a very crucial issue in uh, the intellectual property no? company. That's why we have our WIPO, the World Intellectual Property Office, that is based in Switzerland that regulates or protects the uh, intellectual property of the company or individuals. No? So as to, to the valuation of intangibles, there are several kinds no? or um, classes wherein we can value our intangibles. No? So how do we value our intangibles? Can be income approach, can be the cost approach, depending on the research and development, the cost that we incur in developing that intangibles, or uh, how much uh, is our uh, uh, cost or the price when we purchase that intangibles. No? And sometimes in this uh, issue of intangibles, the sale of uh, assets or the sale of um, these intangibles, there are what we call as uh, goodwill you know, that the company will recognize, especially if the uh, sale is between the group. You know? So there, there are uh, goodwill that will be recognized. And in some cases, this goodwill are amortized during the uh, operation or period of operation of a uh, company and um, as uh, in some cases also this uh, intangible this goodwill you know, the amortization of goodwill are being disallowed by the tax authority on the ground that this uh, goodwill the amortization of goodwill is not an ordinary asset you know? so those are the uh, issues that involves the transfer of intangibles. Oh, and the very crucial is the valuation of intangibles. Our next uh, transfer pricing issues involving intangibles or IP company is the determination of the beneficial owner of royalty payments. No? And uh, as we know, in our uh, some cases that involves also intangibles or IP company, there are uh, question of beneficial owner. Why? Because even if the country or the owner, uh, the legal owner of the intangibles are situated in a lotus jurisdiction, if it can be proved by the uh, contracting party that the recipient of the royalty payment is not the beneficial owner, then that uh, Treaty benefits can be suspended or uh, can be denied to that party and the real owner or the uh, one who really has the disposal of the income is uh, the one as uh, pointed out as the real owner and hence not um, entitled to the treaty benefits. You know? so, so those are uh, cases actually that has been decided by the court. No? So the beneficial of the royalty payments are very important because even if uh, somebody or a certain company is designated as the beneficial owner, but in truth and in fact, that company is not the real owner, then the beneficial owner or the uh, one who really owns that income uh, can be taxed accordingly. and that uh, treaty benefits can be suspended if it is found out that the beneficial owner is different. No? So that is the beneficial owner of the royalty payments wherein the higher tax rates will be imposed. No? So another issue in the IP company is the legal owner of intangible properties. In number three, we have the beneficial owner of the royalty payments. And number four is the legal owner of the intangible properties. Uh, this is one uh, issue that I presented during the World Convention that the WIPO 
about the legal owner of the intangible properties. Why? Because as I observe, I as I observe in my actual practice, the beneficial owner gets all the benefits while the legal owner gets nothing. No? As I presented in the World uh, Convention, I told the panel that the uh, beneficial owner gets everything, the legal owner gets nothing. When in truth and in fact, the real owner as registered under the law is the legal owner, no? oh, especially of these intangible properties because these intangible properties are very expensive. No? And uh, they are they are very um, valuable, no? so that the legal owner of intangible properties, especially if they are just uh, taken as a dummy or they are not the real owner, then uh, they get nothing out of those intangible properties. Okay. Uh, in number five, the the last. Uh, issue that I will discuss to you is the DIMPI or the uh, development, uh, exploitation, maintenance, protection, and enhancement. No, That is DIMPI. No? So that is DIMPI. So what is development? What is uh, exploitation? What is maintenance, protection, and um, enhancement? If you are the real owner of the intangibles if you are the ip company who is the real owner of that intangibles then you have everything in this uh, provided by the acronym dmp you you can develop or you develop the intangibles you exploit meaning you use you license uh, you use the intangibles and then you maintain then you protect and then you enhance if, if you wanted to. If there are some um, of this, DIMPI, there are five, no? Oh, if, if there are something in this uh, DIMPI which the owner is not exercised, then that uh, pretending to be the owner is not the real owner. Why? Because if you are the real owner of the intangible, then you can exploit all these things. You can develop, you can exploit, you can maintain, you can protect, and then you can enhance the intangibles. No? Okay. So this uh, transfer pricing issues involving IP company are the um, uh, subject of many transfer pricing disputes and cases that reaches in court. No? Okay. Shout out. Okay. Anyway, um, we have our discussion on the IP company, and uh, I hope that you have any idea about IP company, no? This intellectual uh, property companies. And uh, we will proceed with the discussion on the BHP Billiton Limited versus Commissioner of Taxation. This is in Australia, no? And what is involved here is the income of the um, dual listed companies, no? the related companies of the BMAG, the BHP PLC, and the BHP uh, Limited. No? Actually, this is the uh, decision already. The one we will be discussing tonight is the decision of the High Court of Australia or uh, equivalent to the Supreme Court in the Philippines. And the appellant here is the BHP Billiton Limited, now named BHP Group Limited. No? They are engaged in, the, uh, in mining in Australia. The appellant and then the uh, respondent is the Commissioner of Taxation. In this case, the Commissioner of Taxation uh, wins over the uh, BHP Billiton because the, the um, appeal here was uh, dismissed. No? The, the appeal should be dismissed and uh, the costs are uh, charged to BHP Billiton. No? So, as, as I told you, we already have discussed the first part of this 
Commission of Taxation versus BSP Billiton Limited. This is the appeal also by the Commissioner of Taxation against the uh, BSP Billiton. And this time in the Supreme Court, it's already the BSP Billiton who appeal uh, against the Commissioner of Taxation. No? Okay. What is this uh, case all about? Okay. Kasi uh, puro appeal na lang po ito, no? So, yung original na case nito, ang history po dito, this uh, BHP Billiton is a group of companies that involves in mining. no? Sila din yung nagbibenta ng mga products nila and then ini-export nila o dinadala nila sa ibang bansa. No? And then the the uh, uh, arrangement here is the one being questioned because may mga uh, arrangement sila dito na uh, that happened to be bumaba yung income ng is ng ibang company no uh -huh. and then the transactions between them sila sila pa rin as dual listed companies uh, sila sila pa rin uh, that transact with each other no okay Okay. So, kasi po rung to appeal, no? Tingnan natin kung uh, meron dito pang little background about the case. Kasi ang nandito, uh, dito may isang overview na po dito, no? Um, BHP Billiton Limited is part of a dual listed company arrangement or DLC arrangement. With BHP Billiton PLC, tatlo po sila, no? BHP Billiton PLC, BHP Billiton Marketing AG or BMAG, this is the one incorporated in Switzerland. And uh, BMAG is an entity in the limited and PLC corporate group, no? So, parang... Uh, BMAG is a Swiss entity which during the relevant years was 58% indirectly owned by Limited and 42% indirectly owned by PLC. BMAG purchased commodities from Limited Australian subsidiaries and also from PLC's Australian entities. Namimili sila ng mga mining products. BMAG derived income from the sale of these com commodities at a profit. So kumikita yung BMAG, no? Okay, part 10 of the uh, Income Tax Act 1936 is entitled Attribution of Income in Respect of Controlled Foreign Companies. In short, ito yung mga naunang transfer pricing law natin. No? Imagine 1936 pa sila, meron na silang transfer pricing na tinatawag. Pero ang uh, tawag dito, part 10 of the Income Tax Act of 1936. No? At ang tawag niya dito is the Attribution of Income in Respect of Controlled Foreign Companies. It was introduced in 1991 by the Taxation Laws Amendment, no? uh, Foreign Income Act of 1990. So, nag-amend siya noong 1991. BMAG is a controlled foreign company, CFC of Limited, for the purposes of Part 10 of the ITAE 1936. No? So, ang BMAG is a controlled foreign company, company po ng Limited. No? Ano tong Limited? BHP. Billiton Limited. No? Part 10 is one of a number of regimes which operate to attribute income derived by foreign entities to Australian resident taxpayers. One of the principal objects of Part 10 is to provide for certain amounts to be included in a resident taxpayer's assessable income in respect of the attributable income of a CFC, Section 316, Paragraph 1A. The underlying concern is that Australian resident could avoid current tax on foreign source income by using entities in low tax jurisdictions and investing abroad through foreign entities. The provisions are designed to attribute the income derived by foreign residents to Australian resident taxpayers who it is assumed would ultimately benefit from the income derived offshore. 
The central provision of Part 10 is 456, which includes in the assessable income of an attributable taxpayer, a percentage of the attributable income of a CFC relevantly. Okay, ano ano po ba itong CFC or the Controlled Foreign Corporation? Uh, kasi it is also defined in the Australian law. Uh, so, a CFC is defined in Section 340. Kasi yung uh, attribution of income, uh, saan siya na-define sa Section 316. No? Okay, the relevant test revolves around the control of the foreign company by Australian entities or their associates. No? So, ang Section 340, ang sinasabi niya is about control. No? The identification of control interest is carried out under subdivision A of Division 3, uh, Section 349 to 355. The meaning of attributable taxpayer in relation to a CFC is given by Section 361, Paragraph 1. The calculation of attributable income. So, meron tayong tinatawag na attributable taxpayer, meron tayong attributable income. No? Is governed by Division, division 7, Section 381 to 431A. The manner in which Division 7 operated in the present case, was such that tainted sales income of BMAG, so anong tawag niya dito, tainted sales income, no? of BMAG would be included in limited assessable income. Ano yung gustong gawin dito na Australian Tax Office? Yung income ng BMAG should be included in the income of the BSP Billiton Limited. No? Section 447 identifies what constitute, constitutes Tainted sales income. No? No sabi ng about tainted sales income. Subsection 1 relevantly provides, subject to this division for the purposes of this part, the following amounts are tainted sales income of a company of a statutory accounting period. Letter A, income from the sale of goods by the company where all of the following conditions are satisfied. Kasi sale of goods eh. So, ano bang ginawa nitong BMAG? Di ba? Namimili siya ng um, mineral products and then binibenta niya sa ibang bansa, no? Or sa Switzerland. So, what are the conditions, no? Na pwede mong sabihin na tainted uh, sales income ang nangyari, no? Num uh, number one, the goods were sold to the company by another entity, no? Between them lang. So, the goods were sold to the company by another entity. Sila-sila lang din, no? Next is, either of the following subparagraphs applies at the time of the sale of goods to the company. So, sila-sila lang nagbintahan ng goods between them. And during the time na nagbintahan sila, ito yung nangyari. Letter A, the seller of the goods to the company was an associate of the company and a part 10 Australian resident. No? And letter B, the goods were sold to the company by an associate of the company who was not a part 10 Australian resident in the course of a business carried on by the associate at or through permanent establishment of the associate in Australia. Ano itong mga permanent establishment under um, the uh, convention, no? OECD convention natin at saka sa United Nations um, uh, yun yung mga basis natin ng tax treaties. Ano itong mga permanent establishment? They are treated as brands, no? May mga certain requirements na pag umabot na sila doon, they are already treated as brands. Uh, number three, if the goods were, were altered by the company, the income does not pass the substantial alteration test set out in subsection 4, no? So, pagka may nangyari na ganun sa income, then ang tawag doon, tainted income. No? So, there is that the income derived by BMAG from the sale of commodities it purchased from limited Australian subsidiaries is tainted sales income and included in the calculation of the attributable income of BMAG to be included in the of limited, no? So, sabi ng uh, uh, dito sa appeal pa lang, no? Sa lower court, 
walang question no, na, na ang income is really a tainted income and should be included in the income of the uh, its pay limited. The dispute is whether the income derived by BMAG from the sale of commodity it purchased from PLC Australian entities is also tainted sales income to be included in the attributable income of BMAG to be included in the assessable income of limited. So, yung, yung parang first layer nung income, walang problema, no? Ang problema yung second, no? Ano yung parang pinaka-second layer po ng income? Ito na yung uh, income derived by BMAG. Sino ba si BMAG? Ito yung Swiss entity, no? Ito yung income na derived by BMAG from the sale of commodities na binili niya from PLC's Australian entities. Kasi di ba yung PLC limited, sila-sila lang din yun, no? And uh, they also consider the uh, commodities purchased from PLC ni BMAG as a tainted sales income and should be included in the calculation ng uh, attributable income of BMAG and then kung attributable income na siya ni BMAG, isama na rin siya doon sa income ni Limited. No? So, yun yung nagiging issue. The sales income in dispute would be If, ito naman yung mga conditions, no? If PLC Australian entities being the sellers of good to BMAG within the meaning of Section 447, Paragraph LA number 2, were associates of BMAG within the meaning of Section 318, Paragraph 2. So, yung meaning na associates. Actually, pag titingnan po natin mamaya itong uh, case na makarating na po sa Supreme Court, Puro uh, determination na lang po ng mga terms ang ginawa ng Supreme Court doon, no? Para ma na nila yung issue. Okay. Okay, so ano po yung mga um, uh, sufficient reasons, no? The commissioner took the position that PLC Australian entities were associates of BMAG for three independently su sufficient reasons, no? So, number one reason, limited was sufficiently influenced by PLC for the purposes of Section 318 to DIA, no? So, yan ang mga paragraphs. So, ano siya? Sufficiently influenced, no? Parang sa atin, sa accounting standards natin, significantly influenced, significantly uh, controlled, no? And then, number two, PLC was sufficiently influenced by limited for the purposes of Section 318.2 EIA. Um, if you try to look at kung sino si BMAG, si BMAG is owned by PLC and Limited. No? That's why anong sabi dito, yung income ni BMAG should be included in the income of uh, Limited, and then yung income ni BMAG from uh, Limited should be included also sa income ni PLC. No? And the number three, BMAG was sufficiently influenced by PLC and Limited for the purposes of Section 318 to DIB. No? So there is no dispute that if any one of this is satisfied, then the sales income in dispute would be included in calculating the attributable income of BMAG and thus included in the assessable income of Limited. The commissioner issued the limited amended assessments for the income years ended 30 June 2006 to 30 June 2010. No? So 2006 to 2010, ilang years yan? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 5 years no? or 4 years to reflect his position. Limited objected to the amended assessments and the commissioner disallowed that objection in full. No? So, nag-protest yung BHP BMAG, pero hindi, hindi siya uh, pinagbigyan ng uh, commissioner or ng Australian Tax Office, no? Because the objection is disallowed in full, no? So, in full, meaning wala talaga in allowed. Limited so review of the commissioner's objection, the, the decision in the tribunal under Part 4C of the Taxation Administration Act of 1953. 
the tribunal concluded that the amended assessments were excessive. No, sabi ng court, ano daw, excessive, sobra-sobra yung assessment. And set aside the objection decision, it concluded that PLC Australian entities were not associates. No, sabi, sabi ng court, the PLC Australian entities were not associates of BMAG for any of the three reasons identified by the commissioner. Okay. So, for the reasons which follows, the appeal should be allowed. No? Kasi appeal na nga ito. Okay. So, anong nangyari dito sa appeal na to? Nanalo pa rin dito yung uh, Australian Tax Office or the Tax Authority. Okay. Ito naman yung overview of the DLC or the uh, dual listed company arrangement. No? Limited and PLC entered into a DLC structure sharing agreement. No? So, nagkaroon sila ng parang agreement, no? kontrata. Other words, pero, pero if you try to look at sino ba ang gumagawa ng kontrata dito, since isang tao lang sila pag tiningnan mo, no? so whatever, whatever obligation that they will impose with each other, sila-sila pa lang din yun. No? So limited and PLC, you can just imagine si limited at saka si PLC, sila yung may-ari kay BMAG. No? So entered into a DLC structure sharing ag agreement under which Limited and PLC agreed that the following principles, the DLC structure principles were essential to the implementation, management, and operation of the L DLC structure. Ano po ba ang DLC? No? Yung dual listed company. The dual listed company is an organizational structure or uh, consisting of two or more organizations wherein they operate as one, no? as isa lang, but they maintain its entity and public listing. Kung halimbawa, pag publicly listed company sila, maintain nila yung kanilang identity, pero they operate as one. No? So, ganun. Uh, you can just imagine how complicated the structure is if you operate as one. No? So, limited and PLC must operate as if they were a single unified economic entity. No? Single unified economic entity. Through common boards of directors and a unified senior executive management clause. Oh. So, isa lang yung common yun lang yung board of directors nila at saka unified yung kanilang executive management. The directors, in addition to their duties to the company concerned, shall have regard to the interest of the holders of the ordinary shares in its entity as if limited and PLC were a single unified economic entity. Ibig sabihin, isa lang sila. Kasi isa lang nga din yung may-ari, isa lang din yung management. And for that purpose, the directors of its company shall take into account the exercise of their powers, the interest of the shareholders of the other, close to B. No? See also Rule 1042 of the Constitution of Limited, Limited Constitution and of the Articles of Association of PLC or the PLC Articles. No? PLC is publicly listed companies. The DLC equalization principles, ano tong uh, DLC equalization principles or the dual listed company equalization principles must be observed. Close to. These principles were set out in close three. In essence, they were designed to ensure that the economic and voting rights of the respective shareholders in limited and PLC would be in proportion to the equalization ratio from time to time. The equalization ratio is the ratio for the time being of A, the dividend, capital, and in relation to joint electronic actions. Voting rights per limited ordinary share to B, the dividend, capital, and in relation to joint electorate actions. Voting rights per PLC ordinary share in the combined group. No? Limited and PLC agreed to pursue and to procure to the extent appropriate to do so that its member of its respective group pursue the DLC structure principles and DLC equalization principles. Yan yung dalawang principle na yan. The sharing agreement provide without limiting close to each party will enter into such further transactions or arrangements 
and do such acts and things as the other may reasonably require from time to time in the furtherance of the common interest of the holders of BHP ordinary shares and the holders of Billiton ordinary shares as a combined group or to give effect to this agreement. No? There were two particular aspects of the, the LC arrangement which the commissioner relied upon in support of his contention that limited and PLC sufficiently influence each other for the purposes of Section 318. The first aspect, ito na yung contention naman po ng uh, tax authority or the Australian tax office. The first aspect was the way in which voting in the two companies, limited and PLC, was carried out. This process is described in more detail below. No? So in relation to joint electorate actions, the effect of the arrangement was that the number of ordinary shareholder votes cast in a PLC general meeting would also be cast in parallel general meeting of limited. So basta na cast na daw ng general meeting doon sa PLC, nag-carried na siya na nag-cast na rin ng uh, vote sa meeting ni Limited and vice versa. Through a special voting mechanism, this had the consequence, ignoring the equalization ratio, that the same total number of votes for and against a particular resolution would ultimately be cast in its company. The corollary of this is that a resolution which may not have passed in one company, say Limited, where it determined solely on the basis of the votes by the ordinary shareholders in limited might pass in limited because the number of votes cast by the ordinary shareholders in PLC would be voted by the holder of a special voting share in limited in the limited meeting. No? So yun ang contention ng PLC. Kasi pag nag-vote na doon sa, sa limited, nag-cast na rin ang vote doon sa Nag-cast na ng vote sa PLC, nag-cast na rin ng vote dun sa limited. Okay. In, in respect of class rights actions, the effect of the arrangement was that if a resolution was not carried by the ordinary shareholders in one company, it would necessarily not be carried in the other. No? So pag hindi siya na-carry sa isang company, hindi siya mag-carry sa isa. No? Kaya nga parang unified yung kanilang actions. No? Kasi bakit? Para ako kasi, alam nyo, ako mahilig ako sa direct, but I have my own analysis. No? Bakit? Kasi ang pinakapakita lang dito na kung ano yung ginagawa ng isa, damay-damay na pati yung isa, carried na. No? The second aspect was the way in which dividend were paid. No? So yun yung sa casting ng votes yung una, yung next naman is the payment of dividend. No? And these are very crucial because ito yung dito nagre-revolve yung life ng corporation no? sa payment ng dividend. At saka yung power naman nila sa nila nakukuha yun sa casting ng vote. No? Na yung, yung mga uh, issues nakakapag-participate sila in the resolution. So the second aspect was the way in which dividend were paid. This is also described in more detail below. Close three of the sharing agreement required that matching dividend be paid. No? So, kasi yung dividend should be paid. Kasi yan ang kita ng mga investors. In practice, concurrent meetings of the Board of Directors of Limited and PLC resolve to recommend matching dividends be paid. No? So, doon sa meeting, decided na kung kailan bayaran yung dividend. The boards made the recommendations to the risk an audit committee which was the delegate of the boards for the purposes of resolving to pay dividends. No? So, yung board na ang nag -aak. As to BMAG, the commissioner's position was that it was reasonable. So, in the, uh, in the next topic, ang uh, opinion naman is to the BMAG, no? ng tax authority. So, as to BMAG, the commissioner's position was that it would be reasonable to expect that BMAG or its directors would act in accordance with the directions, instructions, or wishes of Limited and PLC, which together were its 100% indirect owners. No? Kaya nga, sabi na ng commissioner, ang 
uh, susundin daw talaga ni Bimang yung PLC at saka limited. Patayin mo nga yung aircon. Okay. Bakit si, si PLC at saka si Limited is the 100% indirect owners ng BMAG? Kasi si, sila yung ano, 40, 52% and 48% owned siya eh. So, so it was not necessary for Section 3186B to apply that it be established that the directors neglected or might reasonably be expected to neglect their duty to BMAG or that they had controlled control imposed upon them or might reasonably be expected to have such control imposed upon them. The commissioner relied in particular on a marketing risk management standard as an example of one of the many documents, a recording group, wide standards which are promulgated by the group or by limited and PLC jointly. Kaya nga yung mga reminders ko dito for the documentation for non-transfer pricing, ang sabi ko nga, Um, the documents that you prepare can be of help to you or can uh, be working against you. No? Kasi, if you try to look at sa mga purpose ng documentation, yung documentation na ginagawa natin mismo as a taxpayer, yan din yung mga documentations na ginagamit po ng tax authority. No? So, be very careful at saka i-analyze na natin yung documents natin so that yung masasabi na lang natin that those documents are used by the gov government in our favor. No? So, it is also relevant to note that limited and PLC guaranteed certain obligations of the other entity pursuant to a limited deed pool guarantee and a PLC deed pool guarantee. No? Ano tong deed pool guarantee ng limited at saka deed pool guarantee ng PLC. Sino to si limited at saka si PLC? Sila yung owners ng BMAG. Sino si BMAG? Yun ang namimili ng mga concentrates ng mga mineral products. No? Okay. The resolution of the central issue hinges upon the correct meaning of the term sufficiently influenced. Kasi, kaya nga, if you try to look at sa mga batas no sa mga laws natin bago sila magbigay ng provisions no yung mga nagka-craft ng laws bago mo ibigay yung provisions magbigay ka muna ng definition of terms o bakit ano ba yung bisa ng definition of terms kagaya ng uh, nangyayari dito sa BHP Billiton na to anong uh, decision na nila dito na term the term sufficiently influenced kung ba ay applicable or totoo ba na sufficiently influenced si BMAG ni PLC at saka ni Limited. No? Before turning to those particular subsections, it is relevant to make some observations about Section 318 as a whole. No? Uh, ano ba ang Section 318 natin? Ito yung uh, sa may sinasabi about sufficiently influenced. No? Ito yung sinasabi niya sa uh, Section 318.2 or Paragraph 2. Section 318 sets out the circumstances in which one entity is an associate of another. Section 318 addresses associates of natural person, Section 318, Paragraph 1. Associates of companies, Section 318, Paragraph 2. Associates of trustee, trustees, Section 318, Paragraph 3. Associates of partnerships, Section 318, Paragraph 4. And associates of public unit trust entities, Section 318, Paragraph 5. The object of the provision as a whole is to identify the circumstances in which two or more entities have a relationship or are in some way connected such that they are to be regarded as associates of each other. So far as Part 10, which introduced and contains Section 318, is concerned, the purpose of identifying an entity as an associate of another is to identify when an entity is liable to be tasked in respect 
of attributable income derived offshore by another entity. The Section 318 definition of associate now applies to many provisions in the ITTA 1936 and the Income Tax Assessment. Huh? So the relationship of connections of the circumstances in which one entity is an associate of another are identified by the terms of Section 318. So, ba bakit napaka uh, importante that they have to uh, determine the uh, word na significantly influence. Kasi pag uh, na, na prove na yun or uh, accepted na ng both ano ng both sides, then tapos na yung usapan. Huh? The they revolve around a number of concepts which are not confirmed to control confined to control. Kasi pag sinabi mo na significantly influence, no, meron ng uh, element yan na meron ding control. No? So by way of example, a conclusion that an entity is an associate of another can turn on whether one is a relative defined very broadly in 995-11 of the ITA 1997 or benefits, or has the capacity to benefit directly or indirectly under a trust. No? So, ito yung, in short, mga related parties. A conclusion that one entity is an associate of another may turn in on the relationship or connection that one entity has with another entity, which in turn is an associate of the primary entity. So, for example, if a Company B is a controlling entity of another company, company A. Under Section 318, Paragraph 2D, an associate of B, C, may also be an associate of A. Section 318, 2F. By way of further example, if a natural person, B, is a controlling entity of a company A, under Section 318, 2D, a relative of B or C would be an associate of A magkakamag-anak na sila. No? So, yan ang sinasabi ng Section 318.2F and 318.1A. No? Okay. So, mahaba yan, pero pag titingnan mo sa case, pabalik-balik lang yung mga sinasabi na uh, controlling. No? Uh, ito pa yung mga um, um, write-ups about uh, court decision noon na pagkakahaba. No? Ang hahaba, pero Sa ngayon, these are being discouraged na. Although, uh, dito, meron pa siyang binigay na um, mga computations at saka mga number of, of shareholders ni Limited at saka ni uh, TLC. No? Okay. Anyway, ang pinag-uusapan nila dito is isama ba yung income ni uh, BMAG kay PLC pati yung income ni BMAG from limited dapat ba isama kay uh, PLC no so okay ito na tayo sa decision po to ng uh, appeal kasi mamaya Sabihin ko naman sa iyo yung decision ng High Court or ng Supreme Court, no? Okay. Ito. Ito po yung decision ng court, ha? Sa Court of Appeal. PLC's Australian entities were associates so of BMAG. No? So, yun ang... Uh, na patunayan nila in each of the ways identified at 58 above accordingly the appeal should be allowed kasi dito sa uh, court of appeal sino nag-appeal dito the tax authority no yung uh, Australian tax office i agree with the reasons of the chief justice sabi po ng uh, associate justice na nagbigay ng uh, decision I certify that the proceeding 128 number paragraphs are a true copy of the reasons for judgment herein of the Honorable Justice Tholi. Okay. So, ano po yung decision niya dito? 
Okay. Ano po yung naging decision niya dito? Conclusion ng tribunal. So, kasi maganda to eh. Why? Kasi hindi natin siya masyado maintindihan once. Kasi dyan sa decision, makita mo yung reasons. No? May mga computations pa dito. No? Pero huwag nating uh, ubusin. No? Anyway, meron pa tayong Supreme Court. Sige. Ito na lang yung uh, conclusions, no? Ang sabihin ko sa inyo because meron pa tayong uh, Supreme Court. Okay. Ito yung sinabi ng uh, lower court or the Court of Appeal, no? So, the tribunal's conclusion included control of BMAG in the sense of an ability to appoint or remove board members so as to ensure conformity with a particular policy repose in the person who controlled the majority voting power. Biro mo, tanggalin nila yung board pagka uh, uh, hindi magkukonform sa kanila, no? To ensure conformity, pwede silang magtanggal ng board, no? Uh, with a particular policy repose in the person who controlled the majority. So, sino yung pwedeng gumawa lang nun? Siyempre, yung may uh, majority votes. And sino yung majority dito? Namely, limited 58% indirect share shareholder. No? So, siya ang controlled, si limited. Controlled of BMAG in the sense of control of its business and day-to-day -day activities repose in its board. No? So, sino yung nagkocontrol kay BMAG? Si, si uh, board. At, at nakita natin kanina, sino ba yung board? Unified. No? Isa lang. The member of BMAG's board were required to perform their duties with all due diligence and safeguard the interest of company in good faith. So, anong uh, ginagawa ng board ng BMAG? Uh, with due dil perform their duties with all due diligence. No? Kasi nakatingin sa kanila yung board ni PLC at sa kanila limited. There were... No evidence to suggest that BMAG's board members neglected their duties or failed to act first and foremost in the interest. So, okay, so the tribunal findings, be it Spivilliton Group guidelines regarding policies, strategies, and procedures relating to the operation of BMAG, which include marketing policies or frameworks, were considered and approved by BMAG's board before being implemented. No? These guidelines were capable of being revoked or amended at any time by BMAG's board. So, may power yung BMAG's board. BMAG's board actively evaluated matters and recommendations put to it from BMAG's perspective. In some instances, BMAG's board rejected recommendations made to it and requested revised recommendation or for amended resolution to be put to it for consideration. Okay. So, yan na yung ginagawa ng BMAG. No? Okay. So, BMAG's board, in some instance, uh, rejected recommendations made to it and requested revised recommendations or for amended resolutions to be put to it for reconsideration. So, sometimes naman pala, yung mga um, uh, recommendations pwede rin i-reject ng board ng BMAG. BMAG's board was meticulous in ensuring adherence to its corporate governance, structure, and compliance with board obligations under the Swiss Code of Obligations. Kasi tingnan nyo, si BMAG is a Swiss entity, no? Including in relation to delegated authorities. Any delegation by BMAG's board Included, including under various approval or authority framework, was subject to its ultimate management and supervision. So, so sino ang may ultimate management and uh, supervision? Si BMAG. 
it was probable that BMAG's interest regularly coincided with those of Limited and PLC. No? So, kung ano daw yung interest ni, ni, B, ni PLC at saka Limited, ganun din yung interest ni BMAG. And that BMAG's consequential actions regularly further not just its own, but also those companies' interest. No? As to the last matter, the tribunal noted that this did not mean that BMAG's board failed to make an independent judgment. Yung parang sunod-sunuran lang. When making decisions for BMAG, it noted further that this did not derogate from the duties imposed upon BMAG's board members when performing their functions to consider whether pursuing the interest of BMAG's parents and to its parents' ultimate shareholders was compatible with their other obligations in particular to act in the interest of BMAG. Okay. The tribunal ultimate conclusion was as follows. Limited submitted that BMAG was neither accustomed to, re to treat the treating nor could it reasonably be expected to treat the wishes or directions of either limited or PLC or both if that were possible, as a sufficient reasons to act without more. The reason for this agreement is twofold. In law, the BMAG board was obliged to act in the best interest of that company and its shareholders. In fact, it is acted on the evidence. BMAG's board only followed the wishes or directions of limited or PLC if the board considered that to do so was in BMAG's best interest. No? So, ang pinapakita nila dito na yung BMAG hindi nadidiktahan ng PLC at saan ang limited. Okay. The tribunal reasoning set out on the passage immediately above is not sufficient for a conclusion that BMAG was not sufficiently influenced because they, they wanted to um, convince the court na hindi so, uh, sufficiently influenced si BMAG no? by limited and PLC. As that the term is described, the conclusion is the last sentence that BMAG did not follow the wishes and direction of limited or PLC implied that section 318 paragraph 6 and B applied. The reason the tribunal concluded that the section 3A186B did not apply was that BMAG did not treat those directions as a reason to act without more. That is not what Section 318.2 and 318.6B require, whilst subservience or abdication of responsibility would, would likely be sufficient. No? Neither is necessary. What 318.6B requires is that the company or its directors act in accordance with the directions, instructions, or wishes of another or others. The fact that directors fulfill their duties to their company and only agree to a direction, if to do so is found to be in the interest of the company, does not necessarily prevent the conclusion that Section 3182 and 3186 be applied. Hmm? So the marketing risk management standard, which was say, said to be but one example of material to equivalent effect before the tribunal demonstrated that BMAG was likely to follow the wishes of limited and PLC. So yun naman ang uh, sinasabi ng court. Albeit the directors would consider whether to do was in the best of in interest of BMAG. Of course, BMAG would reasonably be expected to follow the instructions of Limited and PLC, its ultimate owners, as the tribunal found. Having reached the conclusion it did, the tribunal went on to consider an alternative submission advanced by Limited that if BMAG or its directors were accustomed or under an obligation, whether formal or informal, or might reasonably be expected to act in accordance with the directions, instructions, or wishes of any other entity. That other entity was limited and such that could not be concluded that BMAG was sufficiently influenced by PLC and limited. The submission was that Section 318.2D IB could not be engaged where subparagraph A was engaged. Subparagraph A was engaged because BMAG was controlled by limited. No? Magkano yung uh, 
ownership ni limited, 58% no? indirect shareholders. Section 318 2 DIB could only operate where there was no single entity which could on its own exercise sufficient influence over the primary entity. The section can only be engaged where two or more entities together exercise sufficient influence. BIMA could be expected to act in accordance with limited directions, instructions, or wishes. No? So the tribunal accepted this argument, concluding the subparagraph A and B were mutually exclusive. The conclusion was reached because the view of the tribunal took us to the meaning of sufficiently influenced. No? So panalo dito ang Australian Tax Authority. The tribunal equated what was required for one entity to be sufficiently influenced by another to control by one and subservience of the other. No? The tribunal's conclusion would be correct. If sufficiently influenced required legal control, if one entity had legal control, then it would be unlikely that the provision was intended to operate to capture that entity and another which did not have legal control. However, the reason for the reasons identified above, the description sufficiently influenced is directed to capturing relationships between entities which extend beyond relationships or legal control by one of the other. The tribunal erred in its construction of Section 318.2DIB. Kasi doon sa lower court, panalo yung uh, BSP Billiton. No? Pagdating na dito sa uh, Court of Appeal, panalo naman yung uh, Australian Tax Office. Kaya yung salita na sufficiently influenced, uh, yung BMAG is sufficiently influenced by PLC and uh, Limited para yung assessment ng uh, Australian Tax Office ay magiging successful na mailabas na nila itong word lang na sufficiently influenced. Pag na decision na na to, lalabas na yung uh, assessment, no? panalo na yung uh, Australian Tax Office. No? So, yun pa lang yung decision po ng uh, Court of Appeal. Yung discuss ko sa inyo ngayon. But then, on the next, sa Wednesday po, ito naman yung uh, High Court of Australia versus the... Um, sa High Court of Australia po na decision sa kaso ng BHP Billiton Limited and uh, or versus the Commissioner of Taxation or the Australian Tax Office. No? So, yun po yung i-discuss ko sa inyo ngayon. May shout-out ba? Okay. So, uh, with that, I would like to say thank you po sa lahat and have a good night. No? Let's call it a night.